So let's continue exploring the wonderful world of Bash scripting. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video covering some of the basics with Bash scripting. We talked about assigning variables. We talked about while loops. We talked about if statements. Today, I want to continue the journey by talking about case statements, because now that we've talked about if statements, I think a natural progression is the case statement. So let me switch over to the terminal here and let's zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see all of this clearly. Let's go ahead and create a new script. Now I'm gonna use Vim, but you can use any text editor you like. I'm gonna call the script. I'm gonna call this distro.sh. And now we've created this new file called distro.sh and we need to go ahead and at the very top, remember all of your bash scripts need the shebang. They need the crunch bang and then slash user slash bin slash env space bash. So let me go ahead and show you what a case statement looks like. Here is an example of a case statement. It's case and then expression in and then you've got patterns and then the ending parentheses and then the commands if the pattern is met. For example, I could have a script where it asks me a question and depending on what answer I give, you know, if the answer I give matches pattern one, then run these commands. If it matches pattern two, then run these commands. And then finally, the asterisk is a wildcard pattern, meaning if it matches anything that's not one of the specified patterns, this is kind of a catch-all, then run this set of commands. And then finally, the case statement has to end in ESAC, which is the word case in reverse. Kind of like the if statement was if, and then at the very end, you had fi if in reverse to close the statement case is the same way so you have case and then the very weird word esec so let's go ahead and create a script here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to echo dash in meaning don't add a new line break at the end of this line and i'm going to say enter your favorite linux distro and then a space at the end and then the closing quotation mark. Now what this is going to do when the script runs, it's going to echo enter your favorite Linux distro space and then whatever I enter is going to appear at the end of this line. For example, if I say arch, you know, it's going to appear right at the end of this line in the script. Now we need the script to actually be reading for our input. So let's go ahead and read and I'm going to assign this the name distro. So whatever we type is going to be assigned to this variable here, distro, and we're reading for distro. And then finally, I want to also echo dash n, and then we're going to print out the package manager for dollar sign all caps distro is and then once again, space, and I'm just gonna leave that open-ended. So the way this is going to work, it's going to print out, enter your favorite Linux distro, and let's imagine I type Debian. And then it's going to echo out, well, the package manager for Debian is apt, right, A-P-T, based on the case expressions here. So I need to have a pattern for Debian. I need to have a pattern for Arch or, you know, pretty much any distro that people uh, commonly would be running. So let's go ahead and fill out this case statement properly. So let's actually get rid of case expression because what it needs to be is case distro. So case where distro matches one of these patterns. What pattern? Well, let's start with, let's say they enter Arch. Well, if they enter arch, I want you to echo, and I'll do dash in again because I don't want a new line at the end of this, and I want you to echo Pac-Man period. So what it's going to do, if I type arch to this question here, right, then it's going to echo out the package manager for arch is Pac-Man period, end of sentence. Let's just go ahead and set up a few distros here for the, the pattern. So let's do Debian, and of course Debian would be echo dash in apt period. Let's go ahead and add Fedora and we will echo dash in DNF period. Now let's imagine they enter some weird distro that I didn't expect. We do need a catch-all. For any case statement, you always want to have this asterisk as a wildcard catch-all statement, meaning if they enter anything that doesn't match any of the patterns, you know, you can echo and in this case, I will say unknown, right? Because I think that's the most appropriate way. So the package manager for, you know, ABC distro is unknown. So let's actually see if this works. So let me write and quit. And we need to chmod plus x distro.sh plus x means turn on the executable flag so that we have permissions to actually run this as a script. And then once we've done that, dot slash distro, 
and run the script and then answer the question, right? Arch. So enter your favorite Linux distro, Arch. The package manager for Arch is Pac-Man. Let me up arrow and run it again and let me enter Debian and I get the package manager for Debian is apt. Up arrow, run it one more time, Fedora. The package manager for Fedora is DNF and up arrow one more time, enter your favorite Linux distro, I will say Slackware and the package manager for Slackware is unknown. Now that script is fine, but we need to be able to enter more choices than just Arch, Debian, and Fedora. So let me get back into the script. One of the things you can do in these case statements is in the pattern matching, you can give it a pipe symbol. For example, I could do Arch or Manjaro, for example, if I can type Manjaro. And now if I type either Arch or Manjaro, I get Pac-Man and I could you know, keep adding distros. How about Endeavor and Garuda? And for the Debian-based distributions that all use the apt package manager, I could do Debian, or I could do Mint, or I could do Ubuntu. Of course, not everybody is going to type Mint or Mint. Some of them might type Linux Mint. So I need to do that as well. And since it's two words rather than one, let's wrap it in quotes and then still do the pipe symbol. So you see how that works. As a matter of fact, we should cover Arch in the same way, just in case somebody actually calls Arch by its real name, which is Arch Linux, not just Arch. So you see how this works here? That way we don't have to do a new uh, pattern matching section for each and every distro. If the answer is going to be the same for multiple patterns, just use these pipe symbols in the way I just described. And now let's do a dot slash and then distro dot sh. And now let's do mint. Package manager for mint is apt. And if I up arrow and type Linux mint, the package manager for Linux mint is apt. And one more time, let's do Garuda. Garuda, of course, uses Pac-Man. Now let me go ahead and clear the terminal here. One neat thing you can do with case statements is you can have them use flags. You can actually run your script with certain flags. I mean, I'm sure you guys have run programs that had like a dash H flag for a help flag or a dash V flag for the uh, verbose flag or some programs use it as the uh, version flag or whatever. You, know, you can actually do that with bash scripting and case statements. Let's give an example of that. Let's go ahead and create a new script. I'm going to call this one greetings.sh. Once again, we need to include the shebang at the top of the script. And once again, I will do echo dash in because I'm going to ask a question or ask for input for the, for the user to enter here. So I'm gonna say, enter your name colon space and then the ending quotation mark. Then of course, we need to be reading for some variable. I'm gonna call it name. So whatever we enter here, read for name. And I think what I want the script to eventually do is I want it to echo out something like, I don't know, good morning, dollar sign, name. But of course, you know, it's not always going to be morning. Sometimes I might want it to echo instead of morning, you know, good evening, dollar sign, name, or maybe good afternoon, dollar sign, name. So what we could do is we could have the script depending on what flag we tack on when we run the script, it's either going to answer good morning, good evening, or good afternoon. And we could do this by using a while loop. Let's do a while get ops. So we're telling uh, the script to get the option, whatever option we tack on to the end of the script name when we run it. And then I'm gonna have three different options. I'll have A for afternoon, I will have E for evening, and I will have M for morning. So get ops, A, E, M, and then opt, and then the semicolon do. Remember, the while loop starts with while some condition do. But here's the thing, inside the while loop, let's now insert a case statement. So I'm gonna do case dollar sign opt in, and then the first one will be A. We'll do A, and then what did I want it to echo for A? I wanted it to do uh, good afternoon, dollar sign, name. I'll end it with an exclamation point. And then I need to do two semicolons here at the end of each pattern in the case statement. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it a couple of times. And then I'm just gonna replace A here for E, and then change afternoon to evening. And then the last one here, M for good morning in this case. 
But remember, we also need a wild card, um, just kind of a catch-all pattern as well. So let me go ahead and make sure we have the asterisks as well. And the asterisks will just be a catch-all, you know, where it defaults to simply telling us hello name. Now remember how to end the case statement, we need to end it with ESAC. And also remember how to end a while loop because we have to end the while loop with done. Now let me hit escape. And assuming I did all this correct, let me write and quit. And you would need to chmod the script to make sure it's executable. And then dot slash greetings dot sh. Except remember, this particular script, we have flags. So I could add a dash a at the end, meaning whatever name I give it is going to respond with good afternoon. So enter your name, Derek. Good afternoon, Derek. If I up arrow and do dash E for the flag and I type Bob, good evening, Bob. And dash M for morning and enter your name, Alice. Good morning, Alice. And give it some flag that doesn't really have a pattern. Let's type Terry and it says illegal action. There is no dash H flag, of course, so it's going to spit out an error, but it is eventually going to return hello Terry because that was the catch all. But we can actually suppress the error message to where it doesn't print out this line. It only prints out hello name. So what you would have to do, let me get back into the script and here on the while get ops line here before the semicolon type two and then the right pointing chevron. We want to make sure that those error messages get sent to slash dev slash null. So that way we don't have them printed out as output. I don't need to see the error message. So now when I up arrow and do greetings dash H, enter name, Derek, it just prints out hello Derek. It ignores printing out the, uh, the error message. The error message gets sent to slash dev slash null, which is essentially a file on your system where things go to die. So there you have it. That was the case statement in Bash. So now you know about if statements, case statements, you know about while loops, you know how to ask for a user input and have a script read that input and do something with it. Already, you can do probably 95% of whatever it is you're trying to do with your Bash scripting just on what you've learned in these last couple of videos. And this is not hard stuff. Really, anybody can script with Bash. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenrin, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Bash scripting would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys to help support my work. If you want to see more videos about Bash scripting and Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.